can't yeah. even. Wait a second. All right, here I am. Mike still, uh, Mike still yeah, uses yeah. Skype inside of twelve parsecs because that's a <laughs> measurement of time. That's not a measurement of time at all, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, and if you are just joining us, welcome to I Got Next Games Radar's weekly talk show. And there is freaking Mike still on on the on your screen in your soul. Yeah. Hello, and uh, Mike still is the artistic director of the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in Los Angeles. He is an actor you have seen on your television in in multiple humiliating commercials for Walmart, but most recently on a wonderful episode of Drunk History. Uh, and I, I am honored to call him my very good friend. Hello, Mike. Hello, John. How the, how the hell are you? <laughs> no, nice to see you. <laughs> you can't, you can see, no, I, I, you can always call me John. I can't do it. I can't not do it. It can, it, cause it confuses the bejesus of everybody <laughs> out like, there. What? Why? But like, why, why is this even happening? So Mike, uh, we're, we're going to try and play some battlefront and try um, is the operative word. Try here. is the operative word because the matchmaking in this game is really freaking bad, dude. Are we in, we're in like a party together though, right? So, t so we're in a party. Now, what happens is when I I'm going to pick something and then it's going to send you yet another invite that says, join your party. Mm -hmm. And you have to click that. Dave, is there anything else that you have to click? Uh, you just accept like the, I don't know if it'll, it'll straight up tell you, but if you look on your menu, you'll see a yellow box with the number in it of invites, and you just hit that in the top left. Choose accept, and then you'll... So you choose it. Yeah. Ch All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. The the party matchmaking feature in this game is... They got... they not, Nintendo... Not they, they consulted with Nintendo. Yeah, they... Really <laughs> <do online game. laughs> they called Nintendo, and we're like, like hey... We're the online gaming experts at Nintendo... <laughs> Oh, Guys, wait. I just, I, I was obsessed with the beta of this, and I haven't been able to play this because of Fallout 4, and I forgot now I don't have the jets to jump. So you don't, you, you, you don't have miserable. anything. You don't have any, <laughs> you have a shitty pistol. Oh, I forgot about how <laughs> shitty it is to be a, an entry-level <laughs> rebel level fighter. <laughs> well, can you, can you imagine, like, if you're an entry-level rebel fighter, there's gonna be, you basically have to deal with a bunch of people with British accents, Telling you what to do all the time. <laughs> you have John Ratzenberger. <laughs> you have John Ratzenberger. Telling you that they're closing the doors. That Just, they're going to kill Han. And you're Look, like, we got to close these doors. <laughs> well, isn't there like a smaller door we can keep open? No. No. <laughs> Just that one big door. Do you understand how cold it gets in here at night? And Akbar, <laughs> Akbar can't sleep. Mon Mothma <laughs> says it's too cold. So Akbar is frozen. And <laughs> he's... he's Hey! He's in his big tank. <laughs> hey! All right, so we, have, we have an X-Wig with a flag over it. That's cool. All right, wait a I second. Don't, so you guys neither, the I don't, elements. I don't think we either of you guys. Thing. Yeah, no, no you, guys, you guys have not joined. Oh, are, are we not? In, oh, that's right. Yeah, hit start, invites, accept game. See, it doesn't tell you when you leave the game to play someone oh, else either. so annoying. Yeah, it's really bad. All right. Wait, am I not playing you guys? I'm Luke Skywalker. No. <laughs> yeah, hit hit uh hit like yeah, hit the options button and then you'll see uh -huh. the yellow one in the top left and that'll <laughs> tell you that you can join. But we probably won't be you probably won't be able to join because this match is now full. Oh, mm. son of a bitch. All right, well I'll quit and I'll start Okay. okay. I'll start my own match. Okay. I'll yeah, start, I'll start my own cool guy match. Uh, God, all I see uh, of you is a uh, a frog with a, a cigarette. Oh, don't worry about him. So there's <laughs> there are there are two video feeds. So my camera is feeding directly into Twitch rather than oh, Skype right now. I so, see. So you just get to hear you get to hear my voice. I don't worry about it, Mike. I'm I'm wearing the beret that I've basically <laughs> been wearing. Since you and I started talking about Star Wars 15 years ago. 15 years ago, back at uh, Penn State in, in 99 or 2000. In, right around in, that. In, in the long, long ago when the prequels, when we still held a lot of hope. We, we got, because episode two, there were going to be Towers of Thunder. No, <laughs> towers, towers, of, towers, of towers of Metal are torn of thunder. Torn of thunder a by the sword. <laughs> I can't talk by the force. 
It was a, a famed Harry Knowles quote where Ugh. he said, "Don't worry, Episode Two is going to be great. That Yoda's going to be person. ripping things apart with the Force." And then at one point, I think Dooku like knocks over a tower, kind of. <laughs> kind of right. Like, pushes it over. He pulls a vent out of the wall. That's what happens. <laughs> it's a vent. All right, Mike. I I have I've started a new uh, Walker assault match, right. and so you should see. If you press start, there should be... Is it join party, Dave? Is that what happens? Yeah, and then you hit accept. Yeah, you'll see the invites in the top left. Ex <laughs> you, your party just joined the game. Hit accept. I see join game. It says, I am player one and one of the queue, and the game is full. <laughs> awesome. Oh, bitch! <laughs> this is the problem we ran into. Oh, no, wait. It's happening. Player. You were there. You were there, Mike. You, 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 I was, that was your party? Yeah. You were there. You appeared. Now it's full. Wait. Are, am I there? Imperial? I don't yeah, see it yet. Yeah, the bells. All there I have you for you is yes. your old uh, profile ball beard on here. <laughs> <laughs> it's start. This is actually happening now. Ball beard right. the brave. He who bears the many balls. That's my, <laughs> that's my Jedi name. <laughs> Empire must escort their adats as they march towards their target. Or ATATs. Oh, so you're you're Star a stormtrooper. I'm a stormtrooper. I'm I'm a rebel, and oh. wait, see why? Like again, why is it so difficult to just be like, I want to play, <laughs> buddies. Let's play together. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So have you, Mike? Have you seen the commercials for Star Wars Battlefront? Where? Uh, no. it, okay, so there's a commercial where it's like a, a 35 year old guy sitting in his office he's like a real george jetson like he hates his life <laughs> a real george is real george jetson that's a topical here. reference for you by the way i'm keeping it i'm keeping it topical <laughs> all the hottest hanna barbera references right all the chat. all the hot hot hanna barbera references all right i'm gonna attack this atat -AT with a speeder bike because no that's... not if is that the commercial where everyone gets raptured? No, I, no, nobody gets raptured in this the one. The leftover season three. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, are you and I just running into each other with the speed yeah, bikes? Yeah, we are. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is exa oh. <laughs> oh no. You were killed oh, this, this is, by this yourself. Cool. <laughs> I got. They probably have. They probably didn't. Uh, they're, they're having so much trouble with the matchmaking because they put so much. Effort into the single player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the rich. It's the rich campaign, the rich, the rich and and glorious campaign that they added in. <laughs> All right. So in the in the rest of this commercial, this this real George Jetson, this real <laughs> this real working Joe, uh, is like remembering all the times that he plent, spent playing Star Wars, like in his backyard as a little kid. And it's like his best friend coming over, and they're like riding bikes. And they made them like X wings, and then mm -hmm. an actual X wing fighter shows up outside of his office, and he throws a chair through the window of his office, and then jumps out <laughs> into an X wing, and then he and his friends what? are playing Star Wars again. This is a real thing. So, what? all right, but he's not going to get his work done. Right, he's not going to get any of his work done. And let's forget. <laughs> He's gonna get fired. He's definitely gonna get fired. Gonna throwing a chair, a chair through the building. The <laughs> and like, let's forget that this is clearly some really sick Alan Ball style metaphor for committing suicide. That's clearly going <laughs> on in this commercial. He's just throwing himself out. And then it says, yeah, it says Todd Turner, 1984 <laughs> to 2015, and they're right off the six feet under. Oh, it's <laughs> brutal. But so, like, I, like the, the entire commercial's a lie. You can't even do, you can't even do what it, what they suppose you can He should do. have looked out and seen a little blue, like, pellet that he went and touched and then suddenly was in an x wing. <laughs> right, right. He zooms out and he's in a snow globe. <laughs> or it like it's like him remembering all of his like treasured memories and it's like he him on his bike in seventh grade and like they made it like an x-wing and then that time in college that he was wearing a metal bikini and <laughs> <laughs> just get real weird with it <laughs> just gets really upsetting really when quickly his friends were like we can't freeze you he's like freeze me in carbonite man <laughs> do it do it, <laughs> do it right die, now dude. <laughs> Dude, I, no, man, I got a straw sticking out of this latex you're putting around me. 
<laughs> and then and then the vomiting from all of the alcohol. Oh, it's <laughs> just right out that little straw. <laughs> so, Mike, I gotta I gotta ask you, man. I I I've, I've I wanted you to tell this story because it was it was a weird moment for you in your professional life, where, at, at in your position as a artistic director at UCB, you are occasionally asked to recommend folks to audition for things and you 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 were asked to make recommendations for the force awakens when they before it was called yeah. the force awakens oh yeah this was like a year and a half ago or so and they were they were doing a real big search for finn and uh they asked if i had any recommendations and um i sent some people in i was able to get someone an audition i think cool and uh it was great and but they made a <laughs> i thought the funny thing was someone made a joke about Benedict Cumberbatch, because like I guess it was like right when the rumor was that he was going to be in it, mm. and they're like, yes, of course Benedict will be in it. It's a it's a requirement that he's in every sci-fi movie now. <laughs> excuse, excuse me, sir. We're going to have Benedict Cumberbatch in the casting, but he can't make this audition because he's in every <laughs> single movie. So we're just going to send David Tennant. Yeah. But please yeah. just please just assume that he, <laughs> that he will not get the part. Because nobody <laughs> likes it. <laughs> um, so what? Like what? How does this process work? Who contacts you, and what? What? What sort of intermediaries do you have to actually go I was, through? I was contacted by a casting director who actually does a, a fair amount of comedy work. They, they were doing a pretty big search, so there was like, uh, you know, they were they were pretty much pulling everyone in that they could. So they they uh, getting all the different casting directors, everyone in L.A., everyone that kind of like knows the scene and who's out there and who's acting. And uh, I was contacted with her and a, and a manager. I think, I don't even know if it was one of Lucas's uh, uh, talent managers or, or whatnot. And they were both, they both kind of chatted it up. And they were, they were vague about the part or whatever, you know. They, they couldn't really say anything about it. I don't think they knew anything about it. I'm sure they didn't know that Finn is Yoda's son. Or whatever, you know. So <laughs> they didn't even know that Finn is a clone of an Australian cosplayer that played Boba Fett <laughs> for, <laughs> for children's birthday party. It, it already, opens up with the spoilers, guys. Yeah, right after the opening sprawl, it goes down to a uh, a Comic Con thing in Australia. <laughs> this guy gets frozen <laughs> and then shipped into the past. Boy, what? <laughs> It's just really worried. It's just such terrible fan service. <laughs> like, you two could beat Star Wars. <laughs> we were, yeah, you're we were in Star Wars now, Star too. Wars. You're, you're in the... Star Wars all along. <laughs> You've been in Star Wars all along. Hey, turns out that uh, Star Wars was in me all along. What? Uh, <laughs> and there's like, is there like just a g guy like chewing a cigar waiting for you when <laughs> yeah. you get there? Be like, yeah, kid, you're in Star Wars. Star Wars was in you. It connects us you all. Anyway, that'll be 15 bucks. <laughs> It'll be 15 bucks, and uh, we're not really starting things till after the weekend, and it's a three-day weekend because, uh, you know, Hollywood takes a lot of long breaks, so... Uh, <laughs> it's so a I'll union thing, kid. Shit. Yeah. Anyway, just stick around, and uh, don't talk to nobody in no robot masks, okay? Yeah, don't talk... Because a bunch of people are going to say that they're, uh, you know, with Star Wars, and they're going to be wearing robot masks. You do not want to talk to them. Don't talk to them. Ain't... And, and, I mean, you know your parents, right? You weren't, like, adopted or nothing. Because if somebody says that you're dead, just don't talk to him, neither. <laughs> just, just don't. This is a pretty common... This is a pretty common thing where people's going to say that you're, they're your dad. You just don't talk to them. <laughs> just, don't, just don't talk to them. Don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't, just don't do them. All right, get on the speeder bike. Uh, Mike, yeah. were you, were you oh. like, tempted to sit there and say like yes cast me yes well i went in i, I went in for, and, and auditioned for something for this uh uh person for the casting director and it was like pilot season or whatever and she's like well gosh it was uh thanks for helping i re really wish there was a role in it for you i'm like i bet you can find one <laughs> i bet there's something hey, i think there's I'll something think, okay I'll, I'll, i bet there's something <laughs> but it's it's wild because like people are going out and uh, auditioning for Star Wars now. Like, I have yeah. a couple friends that are, have auditioned for other roles in Star Wars. Like, I have a, a, a in the Han Solo film that's coming out. Or, yeah, Han Solo, I think. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight. Oh, eight. 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 Yeah. And they get these sides that are just like the most excruciatingly vague sides that you can get. <laughs> 
which now, is like really hard. Yeah. Okay. When you when you say that, that's that's a piece of terminology that I don't think anybody is. Oh, I'm that sorry. Everyone I, is totally I, familiar with. Yeah, that's okay. I I should communicate better. So like sides are little pieces of the script that you read when you're auditioning for something. So. You know, if, if something is not a big secret, they'll send you the sides. If you're auditioning for, like, you know, uh, uh, the middle and you're auditioning for, like, car salesmen or whatever, it's like they don't need to be secret about that because no one's going to be, like, publishing those online or whatever, right? right? So Nobody's the, waiting to find out. They're like, oh, my God, the car salesman is actually a Sith Lord now. Oh, <laughs> twist in season five. You know, like, we've got to make these, this interesting. Indiana is just, like, the, the realm of the Sith. <laughs> What's the Sith home planet name? Biss? It's, oh, <laughs> uh, it's, um, son of a bitch. Yeah, it's something like that. Yes. <laughs> no, no, Biss is the center. Now now we're getting into some hardcore nerd This is shit. some arcane, like... B Biss uh, is, was, in the EU, the Imperial Throne World. Because okay. he was, uh, Palpatine abandoned Coruscant, and it was, uh, Biss was in the galactic center. Mmm. That's cor right. Corbon. <laughs> Korriban, that's the Sith planet, yeah. Oh, yeah, Korriban is from, like, uh, Knights of the Old Republic and stuff, right? Yeah. Where they built all their temples. <laughs> Where they, like, and why would anybody go there? Why, like, <laughs> even after the fact, like, don't go there. <laughs> I mean, it, this is, it's the whole fallacy, not to get into prequel smack talk, but, like, the whole fallacy of, like, robot armies on planets. It's uh. like, why would anyone fight on these abandoned planets, like, Geonesis, or whatever? Like, what? <laughs> don't put an army there. Just don't put your army down there, and don't fight down there. You don't need to do it. <laughs> you don't need to do it. So, so do you think the real people, like, physical beings on Geonosis, were occasionally like, I don't understand what we should be afraid of. Like, yeah. there doesn't even <laughs> seem to be a war going on. And then somebody would be like, you can't see all these flying bugs? And robots? Be like, no, no, I, I can't. Oh, we just destroyed that ATAT. -AT. That was yeah, awesome. Ah, uh, yeah, nineteenth place out of twenty, everybody. Yeah. Seventeen. Not last. Not, not last. <laughs> Which, by the way, I had to change FM Blumpkin on Xbox, and I haven't had to change it yet. Oh wait, Place why did they make you change FM Blumpkin? You've had that name <laughs> forever. I know, I guess Blumpkin is a bad word. <laughs> well, you know what, Microsoft? That's just <laughs> unfair. It was like a jokey term in like the early 2000s. I don't think anyone uses it in yeah. a real term. <laughs> well, there's, there's that one guy in standards and practices at Xbox Live who knows all about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, hello and welcome to I Got Next. This is Games Radar's weekly talk show. Where we hang out with somebody outside of the world of games. Today we're hanging out with Mike Still of the Upright Citizen Brigade and an actor who you will have seen in recent episodes of shows like The Kroll Show and Drunk History. Uh, and we're talking we're talking about Star Wars. And Mike, do you do you actually remember the first time you saw Star Wars? Is that a memory that exists for you? You know what? I think I actually do remember the first time that I saw um, uh, Return of the Jedi. Does that count as Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> yes. You're, this is this is a Return of the Jedi safe zone. I, I want to say. If, you, if you're gonna say like one of the Endor Ewok movies, we'd probably have to <laughs> stop you there. But no, Return of the Jedi is fine. I just want to put Although, it out there, guys. In that Endor movie where they touch the water and they get stuck in the water. <laughs> Oof! I would hate that. Battle of Endor. I'm gonna put it out there. Is the sexiest Star Wars movie there is. <laughs> is it Battle of Endor? All right, Battle of Endor. Because it's first of all, it's got like a glam rock witch as the main character. And, like, a glam rock witch, like, being real handsy with a bunch of oh, midget yeah. bears, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, the, the, that right now. Uh, Isn't she the, the, like, the villain in Power Rangers? Yeah, that's she's different. sort of, yeah. She's... Rita Repulsa. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the exact same. How, uh, where do you like, think? They're canonical with first... each other. Yeah, they're definitely canonical. Uh, uh, Cranston is in... <laughs> Brian Cranston is in... Power Rangers, and that's canonical in Breaking Bad. Wait a second, is that accurate? Brian Cranston yes. in Power Rangers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's deeply he's like disturbing. It's like a doofy villain in it. Uh, <laughs> my, so my first Star Wars memory is seeing uh, Return of the Jedi. I remember seeing Return of the Jedi, and I was probably, what, like three or four years old. I think mm. we saw it, my dad and I saw it at like the Dollar Theater 
you know. Uh, uh, and we were both really sick, and he took off from work. That was like a thing you do is like take off from work, and we go and see it. And I remember the um, the thing that was I remember seeing Jabba the Hutt, and I remember seeing Darth Vader's with no helmet on. But I remember him as being green, mm. which is not accurate. He's sort <laughs> yeah. of he's sort of greenish. Yeah, like, he's kind of greenish. And I guess yeah, maybe movie projection technology wasn't as good back then. But then like uh, I also remember the the thing I really remember is right at the beginning of the movie. It's like don't talk during the movie. You know, one of those things. Yeah. And uh, it was it showed. <laughs> if you like brought kind of your talk. rotary phone to the theater, please oh, yeah. do not t- talk on your. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk on your rotary phone or your fax machine. Uh, but someone was like talking, and this big hook came out and pulled him away. And I was like, "Don't talk!" And I was like, "What the fuck, man? That's terrifying." <laughs> <laughs> we talk, they're gonna rip us out of here. And then I, I, I remember taking a moment, being like, "That's not real, Mike. This is it's it's just a, a gag. It's a joke." You had to like, you had to, you had to rein yourself in. I had to rein myself in. Oh God, Luke Skywalker. Let's threaten this blonde kid, everybody. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah! That's right. On your knees. Your faith in your friends is yours. Yeah. <laughs> Great dialogue. <laughs> you know, like the movie! Uh, Can you imagine, like, one of the great dictators of the world saying that? Like, Hitler saying that to someone? Like, your faith in your friends is your weakness. <laughs> You're like, all right, Hitler. <laughs> Jeez, Hitler, I can't watch it. <laughs> so personal. <laughs> you know how many friends? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, what's the deal? Ava! <laughs> Ava, come in here and tell him his faith in his friends is his weakness. Tell him that he just loves his friends too much. Aww. Oh, unacceptable. <laughs> Oh, oh Ava. it's getting a little dark. It's way well. It's a little. Well, I. You know what, man? I like. This is the thing. I. So the prequels, the prequels. So the prequels. So the prequels. Oh, the prequels. The prequels make the huge mistake of assuming that a the very real darkness in the original trilogy is something that's just like literal and surface level, <laughs> rather than something that's like a little bit more subtle. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I like that the darkness in the original trilogy is just, like, violence is real, kids, and bad things happen. And mm-hmm. if you're going, like, 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 the ethos of those movies is disturbing. Like, it says that violence is pretty much the only way that change can be affected. It is. There's no, like, I wonder, I think one of the reasons that Lucas tried to, like, I don't know, like, maybe he never really has. He really try, He really pushes a very violent agenda for change. Oh, He's like, oh, time. that's it. Yeah. Because did like see, Luke doesn't Luke doesn't like take a nonviolent approach. Luke denies no. anger. Like, he goes and kills like guards at right? like Jabba's palace. Just yeah. kills everybody. Did you, I need did my you friend see that back. Supercut today? Every- oh, the supercut of Luke killing everybody. Yeah, he like no. kills like three hundred thousand. Yeah, someone did a supercut of every time Luke kills someone in the uh, in the Star Wars movies, and oh, the number's like God. over three hundred thousand because like the Death oh, Star is yes, obviously a that. huge part of it. Yeah, but, I have uh, seen that. <laughs> the first person he kills, he's a farm boy from Tatooine. He kills a TIE fighter in the gunner seat, and he goes, I did it! Yippee! Yay! Right. <laughs> he goes, yay, I did it! And everyone's like, great. Good job, kid. You murdered someone. <laughs> you took a life. <laughs> live, live you have a friend. That. You literally have a friend that you were just talking to who's, <clears throat> like, a, you know, joining uh, uh, the... The, uh, uh, the Imperial Navy? Yeah, the Imperial Navy, right? Because the people just join up. Yeah. Yeah, because because would we ever? All right, not to digress too much, although that's that's bound to happen. But does big? Do they ever explain that Biggs, why Biggs is in the rebellion? Like, you know, uh, it was like a deleted scene, right? Like basically they join, well they join the Imperial Navy and then take the stuff that they learn there and then join the rebellion. Right? That like the thing. Okay. Yeah, that, like that, that that was their plan. It was like they would join the the Empire. Like get trained up and then defect to the rebellion. Oh, I started that reading one of those like post Return of the Jedi books, the new ones that are canon. Oh, they're not. And good. the only one that like got like good reviews, uh, and I guess they're they're trying to like make it look more gray. I think that's one of the things that Abrams is trying to put in of like, look, there's reasons that people join these things. Like right. this is not like rope. Like Lucas's Lucas's imagination took him as far as being like, well, let's just make it a bunch of robots everyone's fighting. So then there's <laughs> right. no moral implication. Do it. There's no moral implication. Just shoot the robots. It's fine. The kids it's the robots, and you know, 
<laughs> these guys are clones. <laughs> hey, these guys are... Uh... So it's I like you're killing robots. Yeah, I remember hearing about the Clone Wars, right? And it, being, you know, four or five years old, or maybe a little bit older than that, and being like, what are clones? It's like, oh, well, in theory, if you take someone's genetic material, you could make a version of them. And I'm like... That's terrifying. That's scary. And oh, it's like a war based around that idea. Yeah. And then Luke is like, no, no, no. It's just this one guy. <laughs> just this one guy flying. <laughs> like, okay, well, that's meaningless. That's that's less bad than a normal war. Well, I thought what would what we could do is everybody could find out that Boba Fett is actually a Australian man with zero charisma. <laughs> and I just thought, like, if we could find a boring person, and then. <laughs> We'll, we'll just make a lot of them. And that way, nobody important ever gets hurt. Ever. Oh. <laughs> Darth no Icky. Oh, Darth, 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 Darth Bad Guy? Darth Icky. You've heard the Darth Icky story, right? <laughs> no. Darth Icky. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Lucas was working on a... A friend of mine uh, told me about this, where, where he was working on... Um, and I think that there there's a story about this in the Lucas Arts like retrospective, like the post-mortem on Lucas Arts. Oh, yeah. Where, he was obsessed with this character named Darth Icky. <laughs> this can't be true. No, this is absolutely true. Look up oh, Darth. Oh no! He really. He was like, his name's Darth Icky. He's like the worst bad guy. Oh. Like, oh. So he <laughs> really, he truly is a toddler. Is what yes. you're saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's all it's part of my original. Something vision. happened. It's all part something of happened. The original vision, the Darth Icky vision. So Darth I, th <laughs> who I was really seeing Darth Icky as is he's a. Bad old man, He's and his, he has slimy hands, and <laughs> but it's a, it's a force slime. It's force slime. <laughs> For minute, just Lawrence, everyone all all at once realizes Lucas was molested. <laughs> like oh god! Oh. Everyone like looks at each other in the writers' room. Like oh, we oh. get it now. <laughs> okay, hey Disney, we better get this away from this guy. <laughs> He's gonna be playing out some real personal stuff from here on out. Let's go to a real dark place here. We gotta get it away. <laughs> So this is this is the most depressing thing I've learned I've learned recently about the prequels. Was I, I I have to say that my favorite scene in the prequels isn't actually in the movies. It's on the making of feature in the Star Wars Episode One DVD set, mm -hmm. like the original one. And there's there's a moment when they're filming, they the they they're doing the test choreography for the Duel of the Fates, mm -hmm. and. So it's you and McGregor Ray and Park Jr. Right? Yeah, or not Ray, or... Ray Park Jr. Is that a singer? Not speaking my own lines makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I gotta go. I <laughs> oh, we broke Dave. So, <laughs> so Ray Park and you and McGregor are like going through the moves. And th there's that scene where he kicks, like, Obi-Wan off of a platform. Mm -hmm. And he, like, fall like... So they're doing the test, and, like, Ewan McGregor actually gets kicked off this platform that's, like, ten feet high. And he falls onto, like, a mat, like a plush mat. And he, he doesn't even take a second. He, like, he tucks and rolls as soon as he falls and jumps up in the air. And he goes... Like, do they want? Do you want to do Star Wars? They said to me, "Too fucking right," I yes. said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, he's just <laughs> so happy. <laughs> he's so happy. He's so psyched, and he's doing like this best scene, and like, it's like actual real. It's like choreography. <laughs> right. Yeah. He, he has no idea what's about to happen to him. No. No, <laughs> no clue. Ten years later, he wishes like. Like the wise and old Ewan McGregor could go back to, to young Ewan McGregor and tell him what would happen. Oh, no. <laughs> he, he literally has turned into Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was betrayed and disillusioned. I was betrayed. <laughs> now, from a certain point of view, I love how nuanced Obi-Wan is even after everything that happened in the prequels. Like, oh, just be like, yeah, this fucker turned into Darth Vader. and This asshole kid that hates Sam. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I guess he's pretty forgiving, but like at that point, can't you just be like, "Yeah, I don't like this guy anymore. He's not my friend." He's sad. He's sad. he was he, he was a jerk from the beginning. He was a jerk from the beginning. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's a really terrible student. Just just a just an absolute putz. And I I said to him, "Don't." If she puts on lingerie, 
don't go in the evening fire and cocktails room with her. <laughs> That's what I said to him. And what did he do? He's like, do you have any idea how fucked up that planet is? They, they let frog people fight for them. They, they, they don't defend them. The humans don't defend themselves. They, don't, you don't want anything to do with that place. <laughs> Like I just I love that the that the original movies they they play up this relationship like Obi Wan and Darth Vader uh, or Anakin Skywalker these like amazing friends they're like yeah they're you know they they learned a lot together but then like the prequel movies just show them like hating each other so much like yeah, like Obi Wan just treats him like like he's a petulant child because he is and like. The tonal difference between that and like, oh yes, we, we were wonderful friends. We spent many times together. It was such such great. I, I've lost my best friend. <laughs> I've lost my buddy, and I can't get him back because he's a bad guy now. Oh, because <laughs> he's a bad guy. Because <laughs> uh, now he was seduced by Darth Icky. Uh, <laughs> Darth Icky came up and rubbed his back, and it really felt weird because his hands were so sticky. And oh. <laughs> oh, no, Did, darkness. Um, <laughs> darkness. Yeah, Did you see I, um, that that episode three deleted scene with them uh, uh, assaulting, you know, Dark uh, Grievous's ship in the very beginning of episode three? Oh no, three? no, no, no! I've never oh seen any God. deleted scenes from episode three. I recommend going online and watching all the deleted scenes from everything. Oh they're, yeah, they're amazing, and they're they're yeah. so like you can't imagine <laughs> those movies being worse. And then yep. you see the deleted scenes, <laughs> like when Ooh. when they go to Padme's mom's house for dinner. Yes. It's oh. like, well, how are you? So you're a Jedi, <laughs> huh? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And what kind of it's like profession a bad is Eugene that? Levy comedy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, what what Jedi uh, discipline are you majoring in? I uh, <laughs> I used to levitate some when I was a kid. <laughs> Uh, watch this. I can do it. Honey, don't try to levitate. <laughs> Catherine O'Hara being like, don't try to levitate that. <laughs> Honey, you're do just it. going to embarrass yourself. Now I can do it! And he breaks a glass. When you did it. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> breaks all of the dishware, and then it's just like a really dark, awkward <laughs> silence. Turns into, a, <laughs> turns into a Rick Moody story. <laughs> Star Wars, Episode 2, The Ice Storm. Ice uh, Storm. <laughs> So, but so this deleted scene, yeah. uh, it's it's grievous, and he's it's the one Jedi that the uh, purple lady, the pink lady that has like, um, I think she's the one that's in like Clone Wars a lot and stuff, right? Oh, and, does she and, have? Does, I think it's the right one. Ahsoka. She have, uh, uh, no, she it's it's Ahsoka's. It's like her, her Ahsoka's first master before she goes with Anakin. Uh, Shock T. Is that right? who it is? Am yeah, I she has head the, tentacles, so, right? Yeah. Yeah. She, well, she, basically dies maybe I'm, I'm not sure if it's her the other one but like she dies uh, by grievous he cuts her head off right and it's brutal you're like what he just cut her fucking head off wow. right and uh or, or no he doesn't cut her head off he there's another place where doku gets his head cut off but uh which is actually in the film right but she gets stabbed right and it's just really brutal and it's right in front of anakin and uh uh obi-wan and what they do right after they start giving each other like baseball shorthand like like touching their noses and stuff like should we do this no how about we do this and they're what? like oh that like joking around like silly like you know their secret jedi messages apparently they use the same stuff that major league baseball uses to like <laughs> give each other secret you know uh, uh tell each other their plans and then they you know cut a hole in the ground and jump into like this pit or whatever and it's just tonally just Awful, just wow. all over the place. This character, this Jedi, we just saw her massacred on stage, and then they start doing this like vaudeville routine about like patting their <laughs> arms and being like, "This is what we do." So bizarre. That's so Awful. weird. See now, I, like, I don't. This is another thing that I don't understand about the prequels at all. Is that the original movies are like there is really good comic relief. Like there are there are moments of levity where you're not going to like sit there and like start belly laughing while you're watching it but like you're you're going to laugh to yourself like there's there's going to be some like chuckle worthy stuff like when uh you know when i mean yeah it's it's gross in hindsight but when luke uh gets you know uh gets a mouth treat from, from mouth <laughs> treat. <laughs> that famous scene where Luke gets a mouth treat. <laughs> <laughs> that moment when he gets a mouth treat from uh, from, from, Princess, from Princess Leia, like or, uh, 
where Han Solo runs into that room full of stormtroopers, then runs away. Right. Like, that's, yeah. that's a great moment. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, at your wedding, the, in, in the uh, the officiant did say, "You may now mouth treat the bride." <laughs> that's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I, I mean, we had a discussion about terminology beforehand, and, and that's where I learned that one. I learned that wonderful, wonderful trick. Wow. I I only had five kills for that entire match. Ooh. Yikes. Ooh. Yikes. Ooh, thinking too much about the prequels. <laughs> I'll have a KD. <laughs> Mike, what are you guys at uh, UCB doing to mark the occasion of new Star Wars? I mean, Games Radar, like, I, I, I would say <laughs> that we're doing too much with Star Wars because we're, we're mm -hmm. doing a lot. Like, just this week for Battlefront, we're doing a lot. And, like, as soon as I say, oh, this is too much stuff, we always come up with something else and I get really excited about it. Yeah, like, Ooh, I, yeah. I had to like make sure that we didn't do too much because everyone would be like, come on, still, don't be such a nerd about the schedule. But like, <laughs> we have this Friday, there is a, a prequels like farewell party or a prequels like goodbye bash and it's uh, hosted by uh, Joan Phillips, who's a really funny comedian and it's, it's, a deck, it's like a night at Dex's diner. <laughs> and it's all... <laughs> It's at midnight on Friday, and it's all uh, characters from the prequels. And that's oh. at UCB Franklin in uh, Hollywood. And then um, on the day, though also there's a show running, which is, I mean, this is such a deep cut of, like, two nerdy things. It's The Room. <laughs> you know the movie yeah, The Room? Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The yeah. Tommy Wiseau film. Uh, but with Star Wars, that is up this uh, in a couple weeks or soon. And then on the day of the release, the, the Thursday of it, I'm involved with the show, uh, the Holiday Special Two. We're doing a second, <laughs> a sequel to the <laughs> Wow, the CBS seven or 1978 Holiday Special. Wow, yeah, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> and then it's going to be such a great night. I have tickets to go see it at ArcLight. Go see Force Awakens, and I'm playing Chewbacca in the Holiday Special, and then I'm heading over to ArcLight. So it's uh, pretty excited about that day. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, okay, yeah. now like. You, you like I understand that people would say to you you can't be such a nerd about the schedule and I can imagine like you do have to strike some level of balance with what people are actually going to get as oh reference. yes like well, we did the we holiday did specials the holiday special seems like that's well known enough but Dex's diner that is a <laughs> I know that's a deep cut <laughs> we, what, what, we have like this midnight slot on Fridays uh, at UCB which I really love because it's it's like this kind of experimental slot where people can try stuff out that is only appropriate for you know people that have had a few drinks like after midnight right uh, there's like really great shows there we have a few shows that are just I have a show called Celebrity Barf Machine which is a <laughs> I mean it's just we do it twice a year me and Lee Rubenstein uh, produce it, and I play Richard Fuck You Dreyfus, and the idea is that after Jaws, Dreyfus made this machine called he made this room, this like hangout called the Celebrity Barf Machine, where celebrities could go and just be themselves, you know, because he's, he's way too famous from Jaws to interact with like regular people anymore. Oh, of course, so he goes yeah. hangs out the Celebrity Barf Machine, and then it's just an excuse for like the dirtiest, craziest sketches you've ever seen. You know, it's like people coming in and being. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, it's, hey, it's Christoph Waltz. Oh, he just wants to relax by, like, cutting and eating his own hair. You know, that's <laughs> And, like, sometimes does that. Like, and, you know, I let people do what they want to do. I'm not, I'm not telling them or encouraging them to do anything. Uh, uh, it's, it's their choice what weird things they do. Uh, but it's, like, the most shocking and also the most fun show. It, it's just really, really great. So hopefully Dex's Diner is, you know, uh, uh, for a midnight crowd on, on Friday. Uh, it, it'll find some people that'll be interested in it. So, the thing... You you know this from experience. You think that the Star Wars Holiday Special is going to be funny. And it is not. Like, no, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's so boring and painful so boring. to actually watch. Oh, it's terrible. It's so terrible. How, how do you plan... Like, are you going to show any footage of the actual holiday special for, for holiday special two? Or are you just going to sure. try to cut <laughs> that off? How long do we have? We have a month, right, to write it? Right. <laughs> it's, we have a month to get it going. I'm not sure exactly how we'll do it. We have, like, when we do these, like, shows uh, like this, there's a couple of different ways. Like, sometimes, like, they're fully, like, written shows that someone writes and, and puts together in a sketch show. It's like a sketch team or a couple individuals and they bring a cast together. And then we also have a thing called bit shows, which are um, 
they're they're shows around a theme. So what you know what we might do for like this is instead of like writing the full thing, we possibly could do a bit show where we send out an email to the you know the community to the all the UCB performers and and writers. It's like a an email a list of about like four hundred people and say submit your idea for like a three minute segment in the show. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like it should be holiday related. If you know anything about the Star Wars holiday special, you know. Uh, uh, here's some ideas like B. Arthur comes back to reprise her role or whatever, right? Because she was a her cantina barmaid a, role. She was a cantina barmaid. She's up there with Dax and uh, all the famous cooks in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> <laughs> so like that's what, and then we like go through all the different um, oh killer probe droid that's new. Uh, then we go through all the different submissions and see like which ones would be funny and, and help people like write them and make sure that it comes together as a full show, uh, which is a really uh, enjoyable way of, of putting something together. All right, Mike, what food from Star Wars would you actually put in your belly? Uh, well, I always want to eat, eat those uh, breadsticks that Luke's has on Dagobah, right? right? Isn't that the Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. That Yoda eats. I, uh, for, a very, for a very long time, I referred to eating any kind of stick-like food as gumming the fish stick. Yeah, yeah I've heard you say that. Which is what, which is what Yoda does immediately. He's gumming that fish stick. He gums that fish stick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would eat. I would absolutely eat Yoda's soup. I don't know what's going on in there, but I, I think that that would be legitimately delicious. Like, it always looks good, right? I, I'm yeah. I, I, like, I wouldn't want to eat blue milk. No. Drink blue milk. I wouldn't nope. want that. I, I'm, Not actually, I'm actually curious to 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 find out how blue milk tastes. Like, I would try it. Is it? I picture it kind of like. Um, remember that strawberry milk? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's like it's like blueberry flavored yuho. That's what yeah, every that's be... what every moisture farmer needs to stay yeah. to stay hydrated. Is, it to be, is, is that to be alcoholic? No, I think it's bantha milk. Oh, is that I think what it's it is? Bantha milk. <laughs> <That's> I think <laughs> so. It's a nice. Yeah, milk. blue milk. I think is like uh, like they serve that at the bar, right? I there is know. some blue milk at the bar. They also <laughs> or. There's there's blue milk at the uh, Lars homestead. Yeah. Right. Lars are just you know these two suckers that took Darth Vader's kid in. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. Yeah. So what is Obi Wan Kenobi saying to them at the end of Episode Three when he just shows up? He's like, look, I don't know if you remember that guy that stopped here a couple of years ago. <laughs> the, one, suggest... the one. That yeah. Probably brought... just uh, take his kid. <laughs> Look, I don't want to. I don't want to impose. I know that that guy showed up with the the brutally savaged body of your stepmom. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but and and then stole your droid. Like, he just I showed up in the just sand speeder blasting alkaline trio. Right. <laughs> 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 just like pumping up brand new and coheed and cambria uh yeah what does what does anakin say to them hey. when he takes c-3po i built this it's mine it's mine <laughs> it's, it's mine, mine now you see robot you built? it's mine anyway and then they get mine. it back and they don't even question like oh didn't we have this before i don't know Whatever. i don't know no don't worry never about seen it. it before in my life don't yeah. just don't think about it when that's the one thing in the prequels uh, beyond anything else that bothers me <laughs> is that Anakin <laughs> built C-3PO. I try not to. I actively try not to think about that as being C-3PO's history. Right. It's you, so stupid. You just try. Just try to let it. Because the Yippee! moment, the moment that they're standing outside of that sand crawler, and C-3PO says to Owen, "I am C-3PO," and Luke Skywalker is standing right there, Owen's response should be, "You shut your mouth. Shut you your are not. stupid That's insane. golden mouth." <laughs> Get the fuck out of How here. How did you find us? <laughs> Luke, uh, Uncle Owen, what's going on with that protocol droid? Luke, go back to the house. You just told me to come up here. Go back to the house. Yeah, he just pulls out his blaster and blows him away. I mean, like, what? Like, wouldn't you do that? Yeah, yeah. and be like, I'll pay for it, but don't, like, uh, done and done. I'll blow this one up. Oh, does the little blue one know him? I'll blow him up. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of my life. Stay out of my life and out of my dreams, Anakin. I, I'm Owen Lodge. <laughs> he has kind of like that cadence of like an actor from like the 1950s. He like does. The, he's like, yeah. mm, no, I don't think so. No. 
like a Walter Matthau. Kind yeah, of. yeah, yeah. What are these? What are these droids doing in here? <laughs> that crazy old wizard's a fool. A fool, yeah. boy. What do you say? That wizard's nothing but a crazy old man. Yeah. So you saying he's a wizard? I shut your mouth. <laughs> Ooh, whoa, what you kid! Crazy old wizard. <laughs> what does he say? A crazy old wizard or crazy old man? What? He says that. I think he says that wizard's a crazy old man. <laughs> that like, wizard's a crazy old man. <laughs> I thought wizard meant cool. No, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that, this, did you did you just say that crazy old man is wizard? No. Yeah. Yeah. That no. cool cat is a crazy old wizard. <laughs> and like, damn, like that meeting has changed since the first movie. So I know, I know that uh, Warwick Davis, the the uh, wonderful actor from Willow and mm -hmm. Howard the Duck and all of George Lucas's films. <laughs> so Not Howard the Duck. Do you think that like when George Lucas forced Howard the Duck to dress up like Baby Greedo, which did happen? That is, oh, yeah, when, yeah. When Baby Greedo shows up, and hey, what role do you got for me? How about Baby Greedo? How about Baby Greedo at the at the old. And, like, I guess we could just assume that Greedo is a very common Rodian name. Like, It's not the same one. We don't know Ooh. that that's the same Greedo. Uh, Boy, they really rebalanced this to it being easy to kill the walkers, huh? Yeah, they're oh, yeah. a lot easier to take down. A lot people, easier I thought people down. were such fucking whiners after the the beta. I, I thought it was greatly balanced. I really enjoyed the fact that you only won, like, one out of five times. Yeah, yeah. The only, the only thing that was weird about the beta was... You know, it's still weird in the final version. Is uh, is the the crappy matchmaking? Yeah, which should just yeah. like yeah, I just it should be. Oh, I want to play with my friends. Oh, it works when you try. Oh, to play yeah, with yeah, your you friends. can do that because like that's kind of the only thing this game does is go online, so you can go online with your friends. Yeah, we're cool with that. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. We did it. It works. <laughs> yeah, we did it. We did it. <laughs> yeah, Mission that and like at the end of Apollo 13. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did it. I'm with my friends on Earth now. <laughs> Apollo 13 is like, I just want to get from out of space on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Whole plot. Oh. So, Mike, what are what are your what are your expectations for Force Awakens? You know, we I yeah. I, I feel bad because we have just been. <laughs> Just been talking about how dumb it is to write the word wizard as though it were slang. <laughs> that poor, those poor, like, you just can't. Will we stop? If, like, if Force Awakens is good, will we stop talking about how bad the prequels are? Is no. that, like, no. we're no. in, like, no. a scene? Because no. they're no. really bad. Yeah. No. It, it's like, it's, you know, it's never going to stop. It's it will true. always be bad. It yeah. will always hurt. Until Di uh, Unless I, Disney just goes and says, we're retconning those movies, they don't exist anymore. They, I think that there's a chance that within our lifetimes, or not even that long, like within 20 or 30 years, they'll be remade. Yeah, like, absolutely. I, I, yep. Yeah. You know, like, why not? Like, or, like, and they'll call them some other, like, the definitive or, or, or some other way that lets them still exist for, like, the reimagined version or something that's, like, lets Lucas still have his thing. Yeah. I, well, I wonder if there will, there will come a time when they decide to just remake all of them. And like they're like, well, Separate. let's and yeah, like ev like all of the original six movies, to just be like, now we have a consistent cast, and because you know, I I love like Star Wars so much, but there's gonna come a moment when it's like the year twenty seventy seven, and that movie's a hundred years old, and they're still yeah. making Star Wars movies. Yeah, <laughs> we're living. Yeah, you know, and. Our ISIS overlords are like, look, we need to remake these. <laughs> <laughs> this is not. This Whoa. is not. <laughs> what a damn bummer, huh? <laughs> oh God, oh, it's the darkest timeline. Oh no, <laughs> the darkest timeline. Guys, we're remaking Star Wars. Okay, great. The bad news is. <laughs> That's the good news. <laughs> the good news is that in 2076 they remake Star Wars. Great. What's the bad news? Uh, the bad news. Bad news is it's being. It's Marty. Rock up. Marty, I gotta take you to the future. <laughs> it's. It's about your kids. He's up for it's a role Star Wars in a new Star Wars movie. <laughs> he's, he's up for a role. That's great, Doc. But that's not the bad news. It's not the bad news, Marty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> darkest timeline.
Darkest timeline. Darkest, darkest, darkest of timelines. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I honestly think that, like, these movies are going to come out. And I honestly, like, I'm so excited about The Force Weekends. I honestly have no expectations whatsoever. Good. Yeah, I think that that's the way to go, right? Like, I, I, I know that I'm such a nerd that, like, as everyone loved uh, Star Trek, and I had issues with it because I'm a big Star Trek fan, and I'm like, this is kind of bullshit what they did with Star right. Trek, you know? Yeah. And I feel like I could be like that with this, but the expectations have been lowered so much that I, I think it's, that, that's where you want to be. Which is Cautious optimism. Yeah. Oh, I think we lost Mike. Uh-oh. Dave, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, I think I think Skype just cut Mike off. That's very strange. S Skype just vomited Mike Skype, out of yeah, it. Skype, Skype was like, hey, I love the new Star Trek movies. I actually like those movies. I, I really, I, well, the first one. I, I did yeah. not see the second one. The first one. Exactly. There you go. The first one. I just... I felt that the like the reboot did a really good job at like kind of being like the old Star Trek movies, but being its I'm back. own thing. Yeah, Mike. And then still, I'm, Mike, did you get back in? I got back in. But, there yeah. you go. But like, still finding a way to like be its own thing, but also tie into the original Star Trek timeline, well, which thought, is like. I wish that they. Oh, sorry. Go for it. No, just like like it's it's really dumb in that Star Trek way, and I loved it for it. Oh, you loved it. I never it for saw that. this. Okay. I never saw the second one, so like I don't know if that ruins oh, everything. Oh, the but. first one. The first one. The first one is fine, just as an adventure movie. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I can imagine that if you were like an extremely passionate fan of Star Trek, that it, it's like you know torturous. But man, uh, Into Darkness is what happens when you give the worst of fanboyism millions of dollars. Yeah, that's that's what that movie is, and Although, like, isn't it? Could you make the argument that it wasn't enough fanboyish because it like didn't really get it? It felt like such a, a uh, like a poorly written fanfic. Is that yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, I guess what I, I guess what I mean is like, I picture like a, like a twenty year old sitting in like, and they're like, man, you know, it would just be like crazy awesome as if like instead of you know Kirk. Yelling con, it's Spock yelling con, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. What a, what a twist. <laughs> I mean, I'm I was happy that they brought uh, Khan back, but boy, did they m miss the point of Khan. Yeah, like Ramtala Montalban was awesome because he was wearing this like leather vest with like a fake chest piece, <laughs> and, like <laughs> just like the, so, and he was he really did feel like he was transported from another time like this weird future from the drug wars or the eugenics wars or whatever they said right yeah like he, he really did feel like this tribal superman that was you know a, a, a genetically altered to be like awesome and in a way that like cumberbatch did cumberbatch uh, cumberbatch i never we, say it out loud we got it just we didn't got, feel that way we got empired we got empired we just, just we barely got, lost. You got empired. <laughs> no, you got empired. We got, we got Sorry, straight guys, up empired. Got empired. All right, everybody. We have just two minutes left. So we'll, we'll hop into a different mode very quickly. Oh, yeah. We wrap things up. Uh, uh, yeah. So with, with, Force, with Force Awakens, I, I guess, like, I th it's really funny. The only thing that I need those movies to do is, A, not be too beholden to things that have already happened. Like don't yeah. don't do what Into Darkness did, and be like yeah. and, and and try to shove things in from from old stuff just because people will recognize them. And I, I guess the other one is don't have like just let them speak like normal people, because people <laughs> in Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, they they still speak like normal people. <laughs> Yeah, don't. that's true. They don't... They just, like, why... Yoda is able to, to put together a cogent sentence. It's totally fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> they can talk. They can they can just talk like humans. They don't say wizard. They don't... <laughs> they don't say wizard. <laughs> wizard is not what is said. Uh, everybody, if you've enjoyed today's show and you have not already, please click that little heart at the bottom of the screen and follow us so that you know when we go live. We're going to have more awesome stuff for you throughout the week. Tomorrow on Departure Lounge, we're going to be playing the new game Hard West, which looks freaking awesome. I, I, you know, I, I know that people love 
they love their uh, their Red Dead Redemption, but there still is not enough good westerns in video games. I need more good westerns, and Hard West looks very, very cool. And then on Thursday, we're going to be playing Mushroom 11, which is one of the most interesting platformers ever made with the developer of that game. Uh, and that's going to be really, really cool. So follow us, and yeah, we'll, we'll be back then. Mike, is there anything that you would like to, to uh, hump? To yeah, encourage man. people to see. And to come do. out. So if you have tickets to see Star Wars, come out at 8 p.m. to the Upright Citizen, Citizens Brigade uh, in Hollywood, California, the Franklin location, and see the Star Wars Holiday Special 2. It's going to be it's real stupid. And then uh, I want to plug my show every Tuesday at UCB called Tuesday Club. It's a really great crew of people. It's myself. It's Thomas Middleditch from Silicon Valley. Uh Colton Dunn, uh, Dan Black, Pam Murphy, Jessica McKenna, and Phil Jackson. We do improv every uh, every Tuesday at 7, and tonight our guest is Horatio Sands, uh, who's just one of the funniest people of all time. When, the, when I did uh, Star Wars, uh, uh, we did a funeral for the, the Expanded Universe about a year and a half ago, and he played uh, the, the Univision version of Darth Vader, and it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It was so <laughs> amazing. It was so amazing. Wow, the Univision version of Darth Vader. That's amazing. Just oh, conceptually, so I love that. It was just him and his, his buddy came out and just did the like <laughs> just a bunch of scenes in Spanish. And it was amazing. It was so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes, everybody, if you're, if you're in L.A., go do those things. If you have Hulu, I encourage you to go and watch the New Mexico episode of, uh, of Drunk History from uh, Comedy Central that Mike is in. If you want to hear Mike tell an amazing story about... Real drunk. Wolves. <laughs> Real. And like, well, that's the thing. I, you know, I've always wondered about the production of that show, Mike. And, well, it was about as drunk as we were for either episode three or The Golden Compass. So put put that into perspective. <laughs> we went and saw those things. <laughs> it's pretty tr Episode three, we tried to watch all the films in one day and, and started drinking. Oh, one <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's a miracle we didn't die. It's yeah. just, it's just, it's a miracle that we didn't die. It's a miracle that we weren't arrested at the Golden Compass. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we were just angry. It was just <laughs> angry, angry. Angry. Everywhere. More than, like, the prequels, it's kind of like a fun, like, oh, what the fuck happened? Right. <laughs> Golden Compass was angry about. Yeah, it's just, it's just rude to me. Ah, anyway, everybody, we'll see.